So what is the MobileNet V2 algorithm? It's a classification algorithm that was specifically written to help reduce computation and memory for constrained systems like a mobile phone, hence MobileNet, or in our case, Raspberry Pi. So the sequence is, they have a convolution, batch normalization, and ReLU before and after a series of residual bottleneck layers. I read 19 in the paper. I saw 17 in the code, but it doesn't really matter. And then they have adaptive average pooling, then linear classifier head, which tells the network what you're actually looking for to classify. They use 3x3 three three kernels and drop out. The innovative piece of this is the residual bottleneck layers. So what are those? The first thing we need to look at is the depthwise separable convolution. This was something that was used in MobileNet v1 and other algorithms. The concept is that you can take a full convolutional layer and break it up into a depthwise convolution, the 3x3 three three kernel, and the pointwise convolution, one by one by some depth. And that can significantly reduce the computation by a matter of k squared or a little under that. So if you have a 3x3 three three kernel, you can reduce it by 8 or 9 times, which is significant. Next, we need to look at manifold of interest for the linear bottleneck. When we send the low-dimensional feature map in, which are features that we're getting from the image, we do pointwise convolution, which expands the dimension, so we're able to do nonlinear activation with ReLU, and then perform depthwise convolution, ReLU again, and reduce the dimensionality back with pointwise convolution one by one, and then we perform the linear activation. So why do we have this expansion and reduction of dimensionality when we're performing these operations? Well, the idea is we want to just focus on the manifold of interest. And we have a manifold of interest because when you look at the image that gets sent through, we wouldn't actually send any image through, right? So let's look at what is an image. So an image is a series of pixels of a certain width and height where each pixel has a red, green, and blue value between the values of 0 and 255. And if you think of all of the possible images that could be created, each pixel could be any value between 0 and 255 for each red, green, and blue. There's a massive number of images that could be created with this variation. And so if we look at this, we have a house that looks like a real image. We can interpret it. It's understandable. But just as easily, we could have this black and white blob, which means absolutely nothing, right? So the manifold of interest is really focusing on the output that's been sent through the low dimensional feature map and through convolution and ReLU that's representing images of things that we actually care about sending through. We're reducing the dimensionality to the manifold of interest, which only represents the images that we would actually care about sending through. So the final thing we want to look at is ReLU is a nonlinear activation function, which we're able to do once we've expanded the dimensionality, and that helps improve the complexity for the model to be able to learn nonlinear information and improve its performance. But when we reduce the dimensionality, it would lose more data than we want to actually lose by performing ReLU. So instead, we perform a linear activation at the end of the residual bottleneck layer. And a residual connection is added between the two pointwise convolutions, which are at the same dimensionality at the beginning and at the end, and that helps improve the gradient flow for backpropagation. If you'd like to see where I implement this algorithm and others, check out the bathroom terror detector, and don't forget to subscribe for more.